Hey guys, welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. I am taking a short part of the Arizona Peace Trail today, and we are going to check out a couple different things. A, a geologic feature called Needle Mountain. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure, and let's go see what we find. Now, if you just watched our previous video, you would have seen that we had come from Founder's Cabin and Woody's Cabin. And we are headed out to a place called Rovi Rock, Rovi's Needle, Honeycomb Rock, or Holy Rock. There are a lot of names for this particular rock right here. And it's kind of a geologic mystery. I had no idea how awesome this place was going to be until I actually did a little bit of research. And here's what I found. You can get to this area by two different directions. One, the back way, which we came, or two, taking a hiking trail off the highway, which is about a four and a half mile round trip hike. And it has been claimed that this rock is either a sandstone or a rhyolite. Since both can look similar, I could see the debate. Look at that gorgeous trail, covered with beautiful wildflowers. This has been one of the prettiest trails that we have taken here in Havasu to get all the way to Needle Mountain, also called Holy Rock. <laughs> There's a couple little outcrops in there. You can see straight through the rock. We'll see those in just a second. And then if you look really closely, we have a lake view right through there. This side by side did a beautiful job of getting us here. Yay. Yeah, this is a gorgeous trail though. Now, as you can hear from my voice, I'm extremely excited to be at this location. I had no idea how awesome it was about to become. My initial reaction and geologic instinct wasn't too far off from how this rock could actually form. Since I had never seen weathering like I'm about to see before, my mind started telling me the geologic stories that could possibly be going on here. I immediately thought of mechanical weathering through wind and rain, possibly making circular motions for the formations we're about to see. Possibly there could be some biochemical or biological weathering going on because you can already see the lichen on the rock. But when I got up close and personal to finally see this beautiful honeycomb weathering, I was truly baffled. No wonder this place has been called a geologic mystery. People in Arizona normally don't see this type of weathering. At least I should say, people in Havasu don't. There's no other formation in Havasu that has this particular weathering. So it got me thinking, is this a rhyolite? Is it a sandstone? Was this once some huge canyon where water flowed through to create these beautiful little cavernous holes? Wow, look at the holes. Looks like parts of a skeleton, doesn't it? So my research led me to this. These formations happen all across the world. These formations are found from the Indian tar desert to Petra, Jordan, California, Australia, and the Arctic regions as well. And the common factors that the environments share here are high salt content in both coastal and desert regions. This type of weathering is called taphony, and possibly this rock here might be part of one of its subcategories of taphony, like honeycomb, stone lace, sidewall, bissel, nested, or relic taphony, just to name a few and they all occur in vertical, steeply sloping exposed rock, primarily siliceous rock, such as sandstone or very crystalline granite. Many explanations have been proposed for the origin of honeycomb weathering, which include marine abrasion, wind corrosion, mechanical weathering, temperature variations, chemical weathering, biochemical weathering by lichens, short-term temperature variations, including temperature variations acting on salt afflorescence in coastal regions. Now, currently, taphonies are considered to be polygenetic in origin, resulting of complex interaction of physical and chemical weathering processes, which include salt weathering and cyclical wetting and drying periods. And most of this weathering would have happened along canyon walls where the water could have flown through like a small river during one of the wet periods. But what could have created this one? This is no longer in any kind of a canyon. There's no water flowing through this area. Now, could this have formed from salt afflorescence? where water-soluble salts precipitate out after a hydration reaction with sulfate-rich sands and then eventually form a cavernous weathering in the rock? This would be a good theory because we're not near any coastal regions where a lot of salt could precipitate out of high saline water. Could there be a chance 
that this entire area was actually a canyon and then eventually was pushed up by some orogenetic event and this is the only thing left over of that canyon? With no other surrounding rocks like this in the area, this one's a really hard one to put your finger on. It's pretty hard to just do some hand waving to say, oh, this rock looks like that rock over there, so it must be the same thing. The only thing we have to go off of are rocks that we have found all over the world that look very similar to this, with evidence of the same weathering patterns. Dan's gonna open up the canister here. Right, a Piece of metal, what are people doing? I don't know, there's lots of very random log books in here. Well, this one's good, we'll, we'll mark on that. Someone's been here today. 17th, happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, oh, there it goes. Is it working? Oh, yeah, a lot of people, or they already had a bunch of them up here. Quarter, good job, another quarter. So are they calling this a geocache or just to say, hey, I was here? Just to say, hey, I was here. I think the rocks are just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Yep, the bunker bar. Have a say, that's classic. Dan and Ellie, can you put Ellie knows rocks? Gotta put that on the bottom too. <laughs> Look how cool this place is, guys. This is just awesome. Thank you so much for joining us and I'll see you on the next one.